Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got five flexibility secrets that they don't tell you. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance in the gym and outside of it in your daily life. It doesn't get much cooler than that. So go ahead and jump on it. Ready? Let's dive into this one. All right guys, the topic of the day is five flexibility secrets that they don't tell you. Now, when I say flexibility, I use that word loosely here because I know that there is a common misconception between flexibility and mobility. And most people actually want mobility overall. And that's something that we should be striving for because flexibility is a component of our overall mobility. And if we improve our mobility, we're going to improve our flexibility naturally within that. So I'm using that in the form of how do we get more mobile so that I can also be more flexible in that today. And I want you to understand that, that flexibility, stability, and our overall joint health, those things are all gonna play a role, and I'm gonna explain that a little bit further when we get into these secrets here so you have a better understanding of what I mean. But if you guys wanna see this firsthand and experience it, make sure you take a moment to drop by the description down below and sign up for my seven day mobility training challenge. This will guide you guys through a small miniature course on the overall way to improve your mobility systematically from head to toe. Gives you guidance with 15 minute sessions, no equipment necessary, and it'll help, help you identify those limited ranges of motion and limited ranges of flexibility that you do have and how we can actually begin to work at improving those and how they might be playing into aches and pains that you currently have and or just the overall performance that they could be killing when you're working out or just how you're doing your daily activities. So take advantage of that, sign up for the challenge and get started today with that. Now without further ado, let's go ahead and start to begin our five secrets to flexibility, aka mobility in this case, that they don't tell you. Flexibility secret number one, core control. So the very first thing that we really need to understand is that if we do not have good control of our core, our spinal column, then we do not have control over the things that protect our central nervous system. And if we don't protect the things that are around our central nervous system, and we don't have control of that, then there is a good likelihood that we are putting ourselves at risk for injury or higher risk for injury. Now, our body, the good news is, is way too smart to allow us to simply injure ourselves and put ourselves in a position where we would injure the central nervous system and injure that spinal column. So what it does is lock up range of motion and flexibility because it does not want us to get into a further situation of danger and injure that. So we need to understand how to control the spinal column to control our core musculature. Now when I say that, there's a few different ways that we need to understand how to really control it. So first of all, we need to be able to control in the form of stabilizing a neutral spinal column. Now this is really important when it comes to exercises in the gym and you know some daily stuff around the house that we are able to actually maintain and control that spinal column in a neutral position that would be anatomically correct essentially. Now that is one position, but it's not always the most optimal position depending on what we're doing. And there are cases where we actually need to be able to access global flexion and global extension of the spinal column as well. And if we lack global extension or global flexion, which would be the whole curvature of the spinal column in either way, then we are also at risk because we cannot create stability through the spinal column and protect our spinal column in that way. What happens is we normally, or we see people segment and we put pressure in one segment of the spinal column and that is where that pressure constantly gets loaded. Eventually that disc goes 
bulging, popping, whatever you want to call it, and we get impingement, back pain, and other serious issues that come along with that if we do it long enough over time. So if we know how to actually divide that force and that pressure over the full curvature of global flexion and global extension, that is a huge benefit as well. This is more likely and common in sports. You never see a boxer or an MMA fighter in a neutral spinal column. And the reason being because it's not advantageous to their sport specifically. They lose power, they lose balance because of that positioning. So it is a situational thing where we need to understand and be very intentional, intentional about how we control our spinal column and when we're using certain things as far as global flexion, global extension, and a neutral spinal column overall to control those. The segmentation of our spinal column, even just being able to segment our spinal column from the cervical spine all the way down using something like a cat-cow can be very beneficial as well. But this is all about being able to intentionally control the core and use it in a way that benefits you. Flexibility secret number two, global stability. Okay, what is global stability? Well, it's part of our first one. So being able to, first of all, organize the spinal column and stabilize it in a good position. But global sp stability takes it a step further and starts to bring our extremities into it a little bit more, looking at specifically the main drivers of those extremities, which are the shoulders and the hip capsules. If we don't know how to use torque and torsion to create stability out through the extremities, then we automatically are likely to create compensational patterns at the spinal column and vice versa. If we don't control the spinal column well, we can also see patterns that limit the torque and torsion out through the extremities. Torque and torsion, and torsion specifically, is very similar to what you hear people talk about with intra-abdominal pressure. It is a form of interpressure through the system of the arm or through the system of the leg that creates stability. And if we do not know how to create torque at the shoulder or torque at the hip to create that global stability all the way through the legs, the arms, and that core, then we are not gonna have access to opening up ranges of motion that we never had before or flexibility that we never had before. And this once, once again becomes a protective mechanism for our body. It's something that our bodies are not gonna let us go into ranges of motion if we are out of position already and those muscles might already be at stretch, which is a lot of the cases that we see. A, people trying to stretch a muscle that is already at full length because the positioning is out, and that really becomes a big part of the problem. So that second cue and that second clue is that we need to have that global stability through our body, understand how to use internal and external rotation at the hip and the shoulder appropriately, once again, being intentional about our movement in it, and that's gonna help us open up flexibility and range of motion as well. Flexibility secret number three, joint mechanics. Okay, so when we talk about joint mechanics, this is referring to the fact that our joints need to be articulating correctly and they also need to be centrated in the way that they were intended to be. A lot of times what we see is that the joints are out of position or they're not articulating well a lot because of the daily positionings and adaptation that we've made to our daily positionings or poor movement that we've said we've we've done throughout the day so if we move poorly regularly this is going to cause our joints to go out of place to create compensations in a lot of cases to create stability. We also see a lot of this due to our actual foot and ankle mobility recently because we wear shoes that have changed our base. And when our base is changed, we don't connect well with the floor. With the floor being our main support system, then everything upstream has to compensate to create a balanced position. And I have more on this. I will put a video right here that you can watch about foot and ankle mobility that might explain a little bit more of how to get that back so that you can recreate your base and get that mobility back so those joints don't get out of position regularly. But when we talk about joint mechanics, we want the joint to articulate well. We need it to actually have the space to move in the way that it should. 
And a lot of times our flexibility is restricted because the joints are out of position. And once again, the muscles are already at full length or at max tension to one, either protect that joint or two, just hold a form of stability. And it's a fake form of stability. So we really need to actually build some of that stability back as well to help open up more flexibility and get into deeper positions because our body, once again, if it does not trust the position, it's not going to let us get into it because it just is going to put us at further risk of injury and it's a lot smarter than we are. I hate to say it. Flexibility secret number four, soft tissue dysfunction. Okay, so soft tissue dysfunction is a result usually of two things here. The joint placement being out of place, so we have soft tissues compensating for a poor joint placement, which is why we did our last one. We want to previously fix that joint positioning so we don't have to worry about the soft tissue dysfunction as much. Or it's the result of compensation patterns. So poor movement, once again, kind of comes up in the picture here. And if we are constantly moving wrong or we have joint placement that is off, then the soft tissues will be compensating around that joint or in that range to create a stability once again. It is a trust thing. Our bodies are trying to create trust, but they're having to deal with stability issues mainly overall. So if we can correct that joint mechanics, make sure those are in good place, and then address the soft tissues from there, then we're likely to be able to open up more range of motion. A big example of this is actually our fascia. We need to work with self-myofascial release to help open up flexibility in a lot of cases because our fascia is highly adaptable. And when we have compensatory patterns, our fascia adapts with that and actually can thicken and thin based on where the force is being put on that fascia and how it kind of reacts to that. So we might actually have thickened fascia at a joint capsule because of our compensation patterns or because of the positions that we're in regularly throughout the day. And that right there makes it highly, highly uncomfortable a lot of times when we try to actually get into flexibility training and work on our flexibility or improve our mobility because fascia is highly innervated. It is a highly neural sensitive tissue that is getting pulled at and that in itself is what causes that high level of discomfort. So know when you do flexibility training or when you do mobility training that discomfort should be expected and that is okay. You have to learn to actually get your body to trust the positions, to breathe through it and open up into those ranges and you have to walk that fine line of this is highly uncomfortable but it's not painful and if it ever jumps into pain I encourage you guys to jump ship right away but if it is highly uncomfortable I encourage you to breathe through it diaphragmatically because as we breathe diaphragmatically we activate our parasympathetic nervous system which helps us relax better and that will help decrease that neural tone that is trying to resist that pool that we're putting on those soft tissues. And there is our fourth secret. Flexibility secret number five. All right guys, our final secret here, and actually it's probably not a big secret because I kind of dropped those words in there a few times already in the other secrets, but it is poor movement patterning and coordination. If we have a poor understanding of how to move well and what is good purposeful movement using our joints in the way that they were intended to be used, using our musculature in the way that it's intended to be used, and using all of that musculature to create that stability, then we are constantly going to be putting ourselves in compensatory patterns to make up for that lack of stability, to lack up that lack of strength that we have in that area. So we need to understand how to move well. And I usually do this through a training program for myself of squat, hinge, lunge, push, pull, carry so that we are working on functional movements that make us more athletic overall and that is my training focus but this is also going into our daily adaptation errors such as sitting and the rigid positions that we're always in in a chair in a car on a couch you name it we don't utilize one of our best friends which is the ground we need to be sitting on the ground more we need to be moving around on the ground more getting up and down from the ground more and that alone will help you naturally improve more flexibility and mobility overall as you get into it. So it's the overall 
amount of time that we spend sitting, standing, and just being in poor positioning and having a poor understanding of what is stability and what is control and what should be engaged and not even really thinking about it because we think we just naturally are going to move well, which unfortunately isn't the case. We're not naturally going to move well. We don't always have those natural tendencies because we need to practice these things and our bodies need to see these positions regularly. So that is something we really need to understand is that we have to be, once again, intentional, and that word's come up a bunch in this video already, intentional about our movement and intentional about our positioning and how we hold ourselves, and then we will see the changes that we wanna see in our flexibility and our mobility. All right, and there you guys have it, my top five secrets to flexibility that they don't tell you. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. You know that this is such an important topic. A lot of people are lacking mobility, they're lacking that flexibility, and it's the reason for their aches, pains, and injuries. And if you haven't already, take advantage of the seven day mobility training challenge down below. Sign up for that, get started today, and it will guide you through those 15 minute sessions, no equipment necessary, that you can do right from home and start to look at where you're lacking range of motion at the joints, where your flexibility is limited, and how that's causing those aches, pains, and injuries, or just killing your performance overall. So take advantage of it. Leave any comments or questions down below. I'd be happy to answer those for you. And last but not least, if you have not subscribed, make sure you take a moment and click that button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside the gym in your daily life. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. I'll see you guys next week.